Hey gamers, it's Wintermute here from Grind This Game, and I got something a little bit different here today. I had this idea of creating a, kind of a modular base that was self-contained. Uh, so what I got here is a little mini base that's sealed. The only input is water, and I'm not even treating the water, I'm not cooling down the water, I'm just sending it in at uh, 90 degrees. Now, I'll kind, of, I'll kind of explain what's going on here. So, we've got, just in terms of rooms, we've got uh, a bedroom, a barracks, a med bay, and a tiny mess hall. And we've got three dupes in here. I started out with four, but, and this could probably support four, but right now it's just three. So I could probably squish this base a bit more, get rid of this, uh, this cot here. So we've got oxygen production here from our one electrolyzer. It's being fed with this hot water. And the oxygen is going... Well, everything from this pump is going into this first filter, which filters out hydrogen and sends it over here to this hydrogen generator, which is hooked up into our main power grid. So we've got two batteries. It's powering this pump and it's powering the electrolyzer, the gas pump, the two filters, and a massage table which they haven't used yet. And this space heater which might not be required, but I felt this corner was getting a bit too cold. So I've got a little thermal sensor here. If the temperature drops below 20, the space heater kicks in and it keeps this kind of an, at a nice temperature. This area was getting really hot because of the uh, the hot water going into the laboratory and the sink. Now it recycles all its own waste so you can see the um, polluted water coming out here at 74 degrees. It basically comes out at the temperature of I think the building, actually not of the building, the temperature of the water that went in. And it comes back out and it goes into these um, two thimble reeds which are growing now because they actually have polluted water. And that causes these to warm up a bit, and that's why I have that one wheeze wart uh, in between them. So oxygen is going, distributing to the, ba to, the, to the base here, here, and here. Hydrogen is going to the generator, and any little bits of CO2 are going into our grow room. And as far as I can tell, this room's not getting overpressurized. I don't know if the CO2 is getting destroyed or whether it's building up. It's kind of hard to tell. I'd have to run this for like many, many, many cycles. I have a feeling the plants actually use it, but I'm not sure about that. Oh, what else do we have? We had a fridge and it's CO2 in here, so this food will last forever. And the food's been pretty stable. I think you only need four planter boxes per dupe of mealwood. So we've got 15. So we've got a, a little bit to spare just in case there's any kind of shortages. Now this, uh, these batteries in the hydrogen generator give off heat so that's why I have the one Weasort in there. All these tiles are abyssalite. So this is a, a heat sealed base. This area does get a bit warm and that's why there's two Weasorts here but it keeps it, it's stable. I do have an Atmo switch here. Uh, the fan only runs, and the electrolyzer only runs if it's uh, if the pressure drops below 1,500 grams. It does have a little bit of decor in the areas that they go in. Obviously not in here, but so so far it's working. I'm probably going to let it run for a couple hundred cycles and see if it stays uh, working. The only thing I'm worried about is the CO2 in here. And if it did get too high, we could just vent it out using a high pressure thing into <laughs> who knows where. It wouldn't be self-contained then, but and we could scrub it, but then we'd have more polluted water to deal with. Which is not too bad. We could deal with that extra polluted water with a few more of these thimble reeds. 
but this will be a bit of a test just to see if this CO2 does build up or whether it gets destroyed or whether the plants are using it. This hydrogen generator isn't providing much power, but whenever it does run, it does uh, help a little bit. So I did build this in debug mode, but you could just as easily build it in regular mode. There's something special about it. You can see these hydroponic farms get pretty hot when the when the polluted water comes in. Polluted pee comes in. It uh, it is pretty warm, but then this weaselwort brings it back down. And so far, this plant's been able to grow without any issues. It doesn't get too cold or too hot. And the dupes are usually pretty uh, pretty idle right now. They're charging up the batteries, but usually they're just standing around. The only thing they can do is actually run on the wheels or collect food and eat and go to the bathroom. Now I've seen some tiny, tiny uh, bases uh, in the forums from a long time ago that were supposed to be self-contained. I mean, they can't truly be self-contained because they need a source of water for oxygen. Unless you had um, kind of like morbs generating polluted oxygen and then cleaning that polluted oxygen you could probably have a self-contained base that way without any inputs at all but with something like this you could just you know build many many levels of this maybe have an access point here that's one way just to get them in once it's all built and then seal them in there forever and just keep building more and more and more of these until you have like uh, a giant colony of modular colony of repeated units subunits I actually got the idea from a, a news article I read today about a 3d printed house that's completely not completely self-contained but it generates its own electricity it deals with its own waste and it even grabs its own water from the air and from water collection like rain collection so I'm thinking of starting a series of videos um, that kind of look at other people's bases and kind of talk about them and see how cool they are. It, just to see like the variety of what people come up with. So if you have any base ideas you want to share, drawings or actual screenshots, uh, please email them to me. I'll put a, in the description, I'll put my email address. It's just grindthisgame at gmail.com. If you want me to share your base in kind of a, a Cribs edition of Oxygen Not Included where I just review bases. So I'll let this run for 100 cycles and then I'll come back and we'll take a look and see how it's working. So I let it run for quite a few cycles and I'm noticing it's getting warmer over here. This room could probably use one more weasel wart or one less battery. And I think it would have been smarter if I used hydrogen in this room, but uh, it might also be getting warmer around this area. Now if they ever had a kind of collision at the bathroom and one of them had a mess, we would get polluted water in here, which would be bad. I think it could throw everything out of balance. <laughs> It's funny how something can seem very steady state, like no changes for a very long time and then all of a sudden one little thing changes and it tips the balance and everything kind of goes crazy. You've probably experienced that with your own bases. Something overflows or something gets a bit too warm, something melts down, someone pees on the floor. I'll probably wrap up this video but I'll let this run. Maybe I'll go watch a movie or something and let this run for a long time and see what happens. Oh, well, this came down again to 43, so maybe this is okay. And this in here is only 37 degrees, so it's body temperature, so it's not too hot. So yeah, I'll probably let it run, see what happens. And I've noticed there's a few things I can optimize. I could move a few outlets around, have more decor, move this outlet here, for instance, or here and put a painting in there. Uh, I think we have too much food. We could probably knock out one food thing. 
I don't know if two batteries are necessary, so that could be squeezed down. There's an extra couple spaces here that don't, or wait, here that don't need to, the, need to be there. The massage table, I don't think they'll ever use it. Stress is really low. And this bed could go. So there's ways to squeeze it down even more. I don't even know if two of these uh, thimble reed things are needed, because we're not backing up with polluted water. But CO2, I don't think CO2 is building up, but they exhale such a tiny amount of CO2 that this, it might take a very, very long time for that to become pressurized. So yeah, don't forget to, uh, if you've got some bases you want me to showcase in a video, um, just email them to grind this game at gmail.com and I'll put my email address in the description. And I'll put a video together just to show off all the different variety of bases that are out there. I might kind of kickstart it by looking at a, there's a forum post that on the clay forums that people post their own screenshots of bases, so I thought I might start there if I don't get any submissions. So I made a few more tweaks to the uh, base here. Things were getting a bit too warm in here, so I removed one battery and added one Weezwort, and I'm also, I was uh, pumping the hydrogen into this room as well, so now it's fully pressurized with hydrogen, and it's staying nice and cold. Now I think it would run fairly steady state without any issues. And CO2 doesn't seem to be building up, at least in the last 20 cycles or so. But I'll let this slightly modified version run for a while and see how it goes. But that would be, uh, I'll save that for a future video. So I hope you enjoyed this. Uh, as always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you guys next time.